Hello, my name is Todd Dust, and I'm an Applications Engineer in the PSOC group at Cypress Semiconductor. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a simple UDB-based down counter in PSOC. If you're not familiar with UDBs, go back and watch the Introduction to UDB video that I created. So in this video, we're going to be creating our down counter, but we're going to be creating it in a library project first. We would like to use library projects because we can link them to various projects, and if we make a change to the library, it will propagate to all those other projects. You can also share a library project with your colleagues. So in order to create a library, we're going to open up PSOC Creator, and we're going to go to File, New, Project, just like you would if you were creating any other PSOC Creator design. But this time, we're going to click on the Other tab, and you'll notice that there's a PSOC library. We're going to click on that, and we're going to give it a name that means something. So I'm going to be teaching you how to create UDB components, in this case a simple down counter. So I'm going to call it UDB library. And I'm going to store it on my desktop. All right, now we have our library. So in order to add a component to the library, we need to click on the components tab. And then we need to right click on the project and say add component item. For this project, we're going to be choosing UDB document or the UDB editor. And since I'm creating a simple down counter, I'm going to name this simple counter. The other thing we need to do is we're going to target this for a PSOC 5 device. For this lab, I'm going to be using the FreeSock 2 kit provided by SparkFun, which is here. And I'm also going to be using the CY8C kit 52, or the traffic light controller board. The reason I'm using this kit is in some other videos, I'm going to actually show you how to create a traffic light controller. I'm going to plug these back in. So we need to choose the PSOC 5 device. So we uncheck target generic device, go to PSOC 5, and then we're going to choose the CY8C58LP, as this is the device that is on that board. I'm going to create new. So now I have my UDB editor canvas. And in this canvas, I can drag and drop different UDB elements onto the design. So I can drag a data path. I can drag control registers, status registers. I can also drag state machines. These state machines create Verilog code, which goes in the PLDs. But for this lab, we're only going to be using the data path. So let's delete the other things, as we don't need them. So as I said, we're creating a very simple down counter. The counter starts at a value, it counts down to 0, and then it reloads back to that initial value. So what we need to do is we need to set up instructions inside of the data path for what the ALU is going to do. So the first thing we want the ALU to do is to decrement the value that's in A0 and then write it back to A0. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on the instruction here. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to say decrement counter. I'm also going to set up A0 to subtract 1. And then I want to write the value of the ALU. So the ALU output is A0 minus 1. I want to write that value back into A0 when I'm done. So this instruction will decrement A0 every time it's run. I also need to, an instruction to reload A0. So I'm going to do that in here. I'm going to say reload counter. And what I want to do is I want to write A0 with a value of D0. And we're going to set D0 to a value here momentarily. So I say OK. So now I have my instruction set up. One instruction reloads the value of A0, and the other instruction decrements A0. So as I said, we needed to initialize D0 to a value. So to do that, you click on this purple box here. And I'm going to set D0 to a value of 3. So that means the counter is going to count down 3, 2, 1, 0. So now we need a way to control which of these instructions we're running. If you remember about the data paths, there are comparators in there. And those comparators are controlled in this output section. If you double click on that, you can choose an output. And you can check when A0 equals 0. And I'm going to label this 0. So this signal here will be high whenever A0 is equal to 0, and it will be low when A0 is not equal to 0. So the last thing we need to do is we need to take this signal and have it control which of the instructions are run. In order to do that, we need to configure our inputs. So we only have two instructions, so we only need to use one of the address bits. And I'm going to set that address bit equal to 0 or the label 0 that I chose. I'm going to say OK. So let's review. 
whenever a0 equals a value of 0, the signal is going to be high, which is going to set the instruction address to 1, which is then going to run instruction 1, which will load a0 with the value that is in d0. And if we remember, d0 had a value of 3. When a0 is not equal to 0, we'll be running instruction 0, which will decrement our counter. So we have just created a very simple counter out of the data path. So in order to make sure that it works, we need to route some sort of signal out externally to see it working. So I'm going to create a new output, which I'm going to call TC for terminal count, and I'm going to set it equal to 0. So TC and 0 are connected together. All right, so now what we need to do is generate our symbol. So if I right click on any white space in the schematic, I can choose generate symbol. And now we have our symbol. So I'm going to say save. So now that we have our component created, we actually need to use it in the design. So I'm going to open a new instance of creator and start a project. And I'm going to use this component in that project. All right, so now that I have creator open, I'm just going to create a new project. Project. I'm going to set it for PSOC 5. I'm going to call it simple counter. I'm going to store it on my desktop. And I'm going to say OK. All right, so at this point, you might be wondering, how do we actually use the counter in the design? Does it show up in our component catalog? Well, the answer is right now, no. We actually have to link the library in to this project. So in order to do that, we go over to the project, right click on it, and go down to dependencies. In the dependencies, we go to this little folder icon here and we navigate to the library we just made. So I know mine is on my desktop, and I called it digital library, or UDB library. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to click on the .cyprj file. We're going to open that. So we say OK. And after we do that, you'll notice that we have a new tab called default. If you click on that default tab and open it up, we now have our simple counter available in the component catalog that we can drag onto the schematic. So we're going to drag this onto the schematic. All right, we now have our component in our design. We got to use it. So we got to set up some inputs and some outputs. I'm going to find a digital output. I'm going to drag that on here, and I'm going to connect it to my terminal count. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to rename it LED underscore out. I also want an input. And you'll see what we're going to do with that in a second. And I'm going to drag that on. And I'm going to call this. Uh, button in. The buttons on this board are active low. So when you press it, it goes to ground. And when you release it, it's floating. So in order to compensate for that, we're going to set the drive mode to resistive pull up. And the initial state is high, which is great. And we're going to apply that. The other thing about these buttons is they're kind of noisy. So when you press them, they might bounce around a little bit. So in order to get rid of that, we're going to add a debouncer, which just happens to be right here. And we're going to connect the button to the input of the debouncer. And since the buttons are high when they're not pressed and then low when they are pressed, we want to look for a negative edge. So I'm going to drag a wire between the negative edge and the clock on this guy. And then lastly, I need to add a clock to the debouncer. So I'm going to search for a clock. I'm going to connect it up. And in this case, I'm just going to make this 10 hertz. The slower the clock, the longer debounce time is. All right, so I have this set up. The last thing I need to do is set my pins to the right location. So I go to the design-wide resources file. I know that my button is on pin 2.0, and I know that my LED is on pin 15.4. So I say save, and we're going to program the board. And what you may be wondering is, I haven't actually written any code yet. Well, there's no code required for this project. It's all done in hardware. So after it's programmed, we'll see if it works. All right, so right now you can see that the LED is on. So that means that the value in A0 is 0. And if I press the button, the LED turns off. A0 now has a value of 3. Press it again, 2. Press it again, 1. And then if it's working correctly, if I press it again one more time, it should go to 0, and the LED should turn on. The LEDs are on. So we created our component correctly. So let's do that again. 3, 2, 1, 0. All right. Well, we've just created a very simple down counter using UDBs. Thanks for watching.